Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our Immersive Engineering tutorial series. As we wrap up the last few things in Immersive Engineering, we're going to now take the time to talk about the lighting solutions in Immersive Engineering. It has three different lights that are all useful um, in slightly different ways. And we're going to go through these. If you've been watching the uh, series of prep for the new Let's Play series, you'll have seen me use the lantern quite a bit. This is the basic light from Immersive Engineering, and it provides just as much light as a block of glowstone would, and is crafted with a block of glowstone, two iron ingots, and two glass panes. Then you get four lanterns, and because each lantern is the same brightness as a block of glowstone, you essentially are... Uh, quadrupling the effectiveness of that glowstone block. Instead of placing a glowstone block for a light, you can make it into four lights. So it just helps to, you know, use that resource a bit more effectively. They're basically like torches, they don't burn things, and they look nice. If you stick them on a wall, they create a nice little uh, connection. If you stick them on top of something, they, they make a connection to that. And if you stick them on the underside, they look like that. Nice. I like using them on the walls because of that little effect there. Makes it look very nice. And they uh, technically connect to each other, but it looks a bit funny. Okay, now on to the powered lantern. This is a step up from the uh, standard lantern, but it does require a small amount of power. So to craft it, you need a glowstone block, three iron ingots, a redstone dust, and four glass panes. So you get two powered lanterns. So it's more expensive, and you don't get as many. Well, here's how it works. So if we go over here to where it's dark, if you place it on the ground, it really doesn't do anything because it needs power. So I'll plop down an LV capacitor and then we will see about firing up this powered lantern. Now you'll notice, if I stick it on top of this um, ca capacitor, it doesn't work that way. You can't pass power through the bottom. And that was a really creepy sound effect. In order to properly use the uh, powered lantern, you need to use wires. So we're going to attach it, and if we right-click on the lantern, the connection's obstructed. Boop. It connects to that little side, and it powers up. Now, the powered lantern, when it's uh, receiving power, and you can see it draining power there, it doesn't. It really doesn't drain that much power. Um, you, you just need, you know, a small amount of power generation, and you'll be able to keep these going. Um, not only does it look really nice, but it actually prevents mobs from spawning in a very large radius around it. A 32 block range, I do believe. But I should still verify that in our engineer's manual. If you go to the construction section, you can find the section on engineered lighting. It has all of these things on here. And uh, the power grid, the power wire, I think, uh, 32 blocks, I thought so. So, it doesn't provide light over a 32 block range, but it will prevent mob spawns in a 32 block range. This makes it extremely useful for safeguarding areas of your base from mob spawns, because you don't need as many powered lights. Now, because of that, you need power, but like we said, it, all you need is a small amount of power generation, and you'll be fine. Um, a, uh, one of the uh, ways that I like to use these um, is with wooden posts. They look really nice with wooden posts. So if we go ahead and... Why is it daytime? I specifically disabled daytime. If you place it on top of a wooden post, it just looks so nice. I do like that. And you can whack it with a hammer and you can put two of them on here if you really wanted to. Not really sure why you would want to. You could have three of them up there. It doesn't matter. Um, what does matter is the fact that you can chain these things together. So I'm not going to put them right next to each other. But if I use my LV wire coil and I right click it on that little spot and I right click it on that little spot, power will go between them and you'll be able to daisy chain your powered lights together. Very nice. 
Even the pig was interested. But now we're moving on to the big daddy, the floodlight. This thing can project a beam of light 32 blocks long and illuminate a very, very large area. It's, it is, however, a bit more expensive. Again, it requires a glowstone block. It requires one glass pane, five iron ingots, an iron mechanical component, and a copper wire coil. Okay, so it's not oh, bad. So it's not nearly as cheap as the other ones, but it's also really not that bad. Okay, so we are going to kill the lights. And fire up our floodlight. Now this works in a... Oh yeah. And if you place it down, it will always point away from you. Even if you hold shift. Okay, so... But you can rotate it, and we'll get into that in a moment. So, I can take my wire coil, and I can attach it to this little spot. And you'll notice that it illuminated this entire area. One light. However, it doesn't illuminate a very large area behind itself. Um, when it comes to that, it's kind of like placing a torch here, or a lantern. It does illuminate an area around itself, but most of its light is spread out in front of it. Okay, we illuminated this entire area with a single light. This makes it very, very good for illuminating very large areas with only a couple of lights. With one of these, you could illuminate like a, an entire, you know, like engineering room. Now it doesn't stop there. The engine, the uh, floodlight can uh, actually do some useful things. If you take your engineer's hammer and you right-click on on it on the side, it will angle. Now you'll notice that it's a uh, Illuminating upwards now, so the light from over there is uh, is dimming significantly. But you can point it straight up in the air, and you can rotate it all the way around. And you can rotate it down at a slight angle. If you hold shift and right click on the side, it'll rotate in the opposite direction. If you right click on the top or the bottom, you'll rotate it around. Holding shift and right clicking on top will rotate it in the opposite direction. <laughs> so you can see we are rotating around and we're able to illuminate the entire area around us. I'm not really sure why those other areas aren't dimming, but whatever. That's pretty cool. Now, the floodlight can also be placed on the sides of walls, which will allow you to angle it just right at whatever you're trying to point it at, and even turn it at an angle there, so you can really realize the uh, theater aesthetic of having powered floodlights. And it can also be placed on the underside of blocks. It really is, oh yeah, it's, it's daytime again. Almost. It really is quite versatile. Um, in the past, the guys and I have had a bit of an issue getting these to work, but I think that was because our uh, mod pack was a bit wonky. But it seems to be working perfectly fine. Again, because it has these little bits on it, uh, you can daisy chain these together. We uh, go ahead and make it night again so you can actually tell that they're on. You still can't kind of tell. Um, I think because the light from this one is not dissipating when I turn it, which is a bit funny. Yeah. But if I use a powered lantern, you'll be able to see that the daisy chaining does actually work. Oh, I broke it. Accident. Oh, and now that I've broken it, all the areas that it was illuminating previously are, uh, are now dimming. Except for this one. For some reason, it's still right over here. Oh, there it goes. Goodbye, light. But there we have it. I very much like the floodlight. Um, if I had one bit of criticism about the floodlight, it's that I really wish... I don't know. It, it does seem turn lighter, but I wish that there was a bit more of a difference between the unlit uh, face of the floodlight and the lit face. Other than just being brighter. Like a, maybe a yellow shift or something. But anyway, that is that, those are the lighting solutions right, for immersive engineering.
the lantern, the powered light, and the floodlight. So, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for future episodes of our tutorial series. The immersive engineering series is very nearly done, in fact. Uh, this might be the last video. It depends on whether I can find something in the handbook worth talking about. Um, the, uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to talk about the immer uh, immersive integration items. They're not technically part of immersive engineering. Uh, you need other mods in order to uh, have access to it. But if you want me to talk about that, let me know. Um, and now that we're getting towards the end, I'm wanting to go back and talk about rotary craft and reactor craft again and the changes that have been made. So, if you're interested in helping me out, uh, leave a comment below or uh, comment on the channel or drop me a tweet at my Twitter. You can find that in the description. Letting me know uh, something that has changed since the last time I did a video on rotary craft or reactor craft so that I can make my list. Um, it's going to take a while to do the research otherwise to make my list of things I need to cover. I know I have to cover uh, the high temperature gas reactor, but other than that, it's kind of up in the air. So, stay tuned for all of that and uh, and more things coming in the future as soon as everything calms down over here. I'm Sutton LH, and I'm signing out.